Hello, and welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, we will be practicing our English conversation skills. I will be uh, facilitating a conversation about superstition. So we will talk about personal superstitions, superstitions in our culture, uh, maybe doing a little comparison conversation and um, a little description, obviously describing different superstitions that exist in our cultures. Uh, okay, welcome to the class, Heidi. Welcome back. Hello again. Hello, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Uh, okay, Sasha has also joined us. Hello, Sasha. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the class. I uh, didn't know if I would see you today. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, okay, our conversation today is going to be about superstition. Mostly we'll be kind of sharing uh, superstitions in our culture. First of all, I guess we have to understand what is superstition? Heidi, in, in your words, how would you explain superstition? Depending on the country or on the place, uh, people believe some uh, miracle, mystery, or something. <laughs> Miracles and mysteries. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. That's fair enough. That's one way to look at it. Sasha, how would you describe superstition in your own words? What does superstition mean to you? Uh, <clears throat> it can be like um, um, the things that people believe but uh, doesn't exist. Uh, the beliefs that people okay. uh, that uh, in real uh, doesn't uh, exist. Like something might uh, influence your day, for instance, some uh, behavior or uh, uh, something happened, for instance, and people think uh, like it's, it might uh, influence their day or future life, for instance. Okay, that's pretty good. I might slightly disagree with you. There are things that people believe that there's no scientific proof for. I don't know. Maybe some superstitions are true. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but, it would be more precise. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Who knows? Maybe, we can say it for sure. Maybe, I don't know, keeping an acorn in your window actually does protect you from lightning. I don't know. <laughs> but I haven't seen scientific proof of it yet. Okay, we've had a few other students join us, so let me welcome them. Hello, Saiban. Hello, how are you doing, teacher? Okay, your voice is very low today, Saiban. You sound very low voice. <laughs> okay, are you okay? Now. Oh, yeah, so, um, I, I, I lost my energy, so, because I'm studying, okay. and that, that's why I'm... <laughs> My voice is low, teacher. <laughs> okay. I was worried maybe you were sick or something. Okay. Um, also, all right. Uh, also, let me welcome Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the class. Hello, teacher. Hey. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Thank you. And uh, Victor has joined us. Pleasure to see you again, Victor. Hello. Nice to see you again, too. All right, glad you could join us. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, let's let's talk about superstitions. Uh, I'm just going to continue around. Saban, are would you say? Okay, let's talk first generally, and then we'll get into specifics. Would you say people in your country are, are superstitious? Oh yes, uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, especially we have a holiday. Um, like may I say it's a superstition, superstition or super 
um, sorry, superstition. May I say that it's a, another kind of myth? Myth, teacher? It's, is it, well, is it we myth? Were, we were talking about what it is. Now, I, okay, a, a myth, uh, a myth is a, is a story, specifically. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, okay, you know, a, a myth is a story that may have talking animals or gods and goddesses or whatever, flying horses or what have you. Um, that's probably not, well, that's, you know, probably not true, but may yeah. or may not have basis in uh, in some kind of reality, um, uh, you know, a legend is similar. Now, I, I do have to clarify. In English, we do say something oh, like, "Oh, that's a myth." Um, I don't know, something like, I don't know. Oh, drinking, drinking. Um, Let's say drinking rosehip tea will cure a cold. Oh, that's not true. That's a myth. You will hear English speakers say that, like that, just to say that whatever you're saying is not true. Doesn't matter. You can say, oh, that I've heard of that superstition. That's a myth. But English speakers say that about anything to say it's not true. Oh, that's a myth. So sometimes we use that word myth kind of uh, idiomatically, I guess, just to say something, oh, that's not true. Some people believe it, but it's not true. And it could be about anything. Oh, the oh, the validity of the Chinese stock market is a myth. Okay, it doesn't have any horses with wings or anything like that, but this would be a common phrase. Okay, oh, you <laughs> lost connection. Sorry, I, I just lost uh, connection. Sorry, sorry. All right, about. I kept I kept talking while you were gone. Anyway, back to the original question: Are are uh, many people in your country superstitious? Yes, teacher, of course, uh, and uh, yeah, because uh, especially after uh, ISIS, they uh, made it. Uh, some part or I mean take control some part of Iraq they are creating I mean uh, some story and people are oh I am sorry to have lost you now hello Saban okay well maybe we can have him elaborate on that later okay uh, by the way, uh, the adjective is superstitious, the noun is superstition, a superstition. Uh, there is no verb form. Okay, uh, let me go to Daniel. Uh, Daniel, where are you from again? I'm sorry. I, I'm tired. All right, all right, teacher. I'm from Colombia, but uh, at the moment right. I am working in Unit Arab Emirates. UAE. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, how about in your country, talking generally, are people superstitious? All right, teacher. Superstition is a. Yeah, there, there are several superstitions in my country. Is, for example, uh, if something will happen in the future, maybe. Okay. Things that bring good luck or bad luck or influence the future are superstitions, right? That's true. The classic example, a black cat walks across your path and you will have bad luck. Classic example. Yeah, the classic example in my country. No. <laughs> that is? I don't remember. Yeah, there are several, but I don't, I don't remember well at the moment. Okay, as we discuss, this happens every time I discuss superstitions. Everyone says, oh, I don't remember any. And then I start bringing up examples of English-speaking country superstitions, and everyone goes, oh, yeah, we have, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Everyone remembers. It's very <laughs> normal. Believe me, you will think of some as we – I have a list of some strange ones 
that we can look at if we don't can't think of material to talk about. But believe me, as other people discuss superstitions, you'll remember. We'll come back and talk to you later. Victor, uh, how about in your country? Victor, again, refresh my memory. I'm, okay, I, I, I am from Colombia, too. Oh, okay, I'm right. Great guy, Daniel. And yes, in Colombia, there is a lot of superstition. For example, we believe a lot on witches. We say we Muslim believe in, wish, in witches, but they get seeds. Also, people believe in, in the number, for example. People always I, are looking for numbers to the lottery. People mm -hmm. look the numbers in, in the fishes, in the turtles, in the telephone number. And with this number, people uh, buy the lottery. And sometimes people win the lottery with this number. OK. Now, wait a minute. They look for the number in the, in the what? In the, in the fishes. Sorry. In the what? Fishes? Fishes, yes. It's very common <laughs> in the coast of the country. Really? Also, yes, and turtles, too. The turtles. Oh, that's what I thought you said. I just couldn't believe that's what you said. OK. I yes, heard you correctly. Practice. People always are so, looking for the, the number of the lottery in a love. Of you, you will have to explain. How do you see a number in the fishes? How many fish? No, like for that. example, the, in, 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 in the skin of the fish, sometimes there is some marks that ah. you can identify some number. So people say, ah, oh, it's a fish, it's a five, it's a three. So in Colombia, we have a kind of lottery called awesome. uh, chance. And we use uh, only three numbers. So people always are looking for three numbers for the chance. Oh, got it. Okay, that's a good one. Great example, and that's what I. I this, this is great. So I, I really want to hear you guys share some good examples like that one. That's a new one. I've never heard <laughs> that one before. It's very common. Cool okay. Practice. Wow. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, great example. That one's cool. Uh, okay, uh, Heidi, let me talk to you for a minute. Heidi, to start out with, I have to ask you, do you have anything lucky? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything lucky, uh, like, uh, this is my lucky pencil, uh, or this is my lucky shirt? I used to have a lucky shirt. Whenever I went to a rock concert, I would wear the same shirt. No, I don't have any lucky. Uh, but before, uh, the uh, pro professional baseball team manager, uh, when he uh, wear uh, the underwear, pink color underwear, <laughs> the team warm. After that, he always wore pink um, under under what's the underpant? <laughs> yeah, underpants, underwear, undergarments. Under yes. <laughs> Baseball players are notoriously, famously superstitious. Mm. Uh, absolutely. Wade Boggs always ate fried chicken. Some number of fried pieces, like six pieces of fried chicken or something crazy, I don't remember. Before every game. Crazy. My manager is quite old, around 70 years old. Yeah, it doesn't matter how old they are. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Nice. I, I, a few years back, well, maybe 10 years ago, there was one pitcher who I really liked. His, his name was Rob Lowe. And he played for Boston Red Sox, my favorite team. And the, he, his hat, he never washed his hat all wow. season long. You know, that, and their hat is like blue color, <laughs> bright blue kind of color. But his part of his um, wind-up, the little motions that he made before he pitched, he always grabbed his hat and he tugged the bill of his hat. That was part of his ceremony or... Um, the motions that he would do. So his hat at the end of the season was brown, like brown, like dirt brown. And where the sweat from his thumb and finger would grab his hat was still blue. So there was one blue mark in the shape of his finger right here. And then he his hat. Really, really quite disgusting, actually. Um, Derek Jeter, very famous baseball player. It was really amazing. He had 43 moves, exactly. 
Like he'd pull his glove, one finger, one finger, pull it down here, pull it down here, one finger, one finger. Pull this shoulder, pull this shoulder, tap this shoe, tap this shoe. He had 43 motions before he stepped up to bat. Maybe Every. He, he should have said, he's a hat and cap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every single time he batted. Every single time before he stepped up, 43 moves in exactly the same way. Crazy. Baseball players are crazy superstitious. Great example. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Sasha, uh, yeah. let me ask you the same question. Do you have any lucky anything? Fuzzy dice hanging in your car? <laughs> Something in your oh, car. Something is uh, I, I just uh, d don't believe in it. But uh, the, in Russia, it's uh, very common to have uh, uh, on your mirror, on your rear mirror, I guess uh, it's called, you know, rear mm -hmm. mirror. Uh, mostly it's uh, <clears throat> uh, Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, 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 Christ or uh, three icons on the. Uh, um, on the board with uh, the saints, 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 people. It's usually three icons. Okay. But I don't know exactly which ones. And uh, some maybe just uh, the special, um, uh, like uh, some some sort of jewelry. Um, let me see. Books. Okay. Mhm. Mm Bead, beads, beads. Uh, have beads on the rare mirror. Ah, like prayer beads. Yes, like the ro yes, yes. rosary. The rosary, it's called in Catholic Christian religions. Yes, yeah. And, yeah, okay. Uh, rosary beads. Common. Yeah. Beads. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, okay. Many people, um, I could be wrong here, I'm not overly religious, but uh, many people have, I think it's St. Christopher is the patron saint of travelers. Could be wrong. Uh, anybody, if you want to correct me, feel free. But many people have that St. Christopher uh, thing hanging on their rear view, like you said, on their dashboard or hanging on the rear view mirror or on the dashboard, the flat panel in the front of their car. Yeah. I always had um, a pair of fuzzy blue dice, like carpet, fuzzy carpet, blue dice I put on my, uh, I always had something on hanging from my rear view mirror. Ah, crystal, fuzzy blue dice, whatever. Not really because I'm superstitious, but because I kind of got attached to them. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I understand, uh, I guess, the, why people have all kinds of stuff and uh, beliefs, because uh, it actually it uh, calms people. Mm -hmm. Any 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 beliefs uh, that uh, like uh, help help you to cope through hard days, like uh, the religions, the any religion. Uh, okay. Overall. Okay. Uh, cope with a hard day, uh, for example. Cope with a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, you cope with things. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, I see your point. Saban, you're back again. Yes, teacher. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I had just some uh, connection problem. Okay. Do you remember where you were in your yeah. discussion? Yeah, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, Take it away. Okay. You were talking about ISIS and I, something ISIS was doing. Yes, yeah, so just uh, I said the people here, uh, they were uh, superstitious. I mean, people here, as you know, especially the people are not. Uh, I mean, uh, are not well educated. The people they are uh, illiteracy, so uh, they are believe of or something that is. I mean, like if if uh, let's say if you go and uh, uh, pray. A grave. If you go on somebody who who die, and his grave, and ask his grave to mirror to be, I mean, to bless bless you, 
he uh, I mean and or I mean he I mean if you ask him to ask God to bless you it will be I mean you will be so lucky uh, so if, if I just say it's it's more about religious teacher the mm -hmm. people are made uh, are, are more superstitious in in the in term of religious uh, religion so let's say I I, I don't have uh, like a, a child I I mean I don't have kids and I really need uh, kids so uh, I will go and uh, ask uh, some pr preacher or somebody who I or I mean uh, let's say somebody who is religion relig religious uh, person I will ask him to write something for me and to put uh, like uh, I mean I, I will just wear as a necklace this writing like it's like I mean uh, something that is uh, will be like um, uh, will help you to to breathe uh, a, a, I mean a, a child so uh, in addition, uh, there are some other people say uh, you have to uh, uh, like wearing um, wearing like uh, necklaces. So uh, if if somebody are jealous and uh, eye contact with you, his eye is very. I mean, some some evil eye will affect you negatively. So this necklace uh, will will uh, protect you from this. Uh, Evil eye, so right. like this teacher. This is the okay. example in my society. Okay, uh, a more formal name for something like you hang around your neck, or maybe on your wrist, or, or whatever, or an object that's supposed to protect you from yes. whatever uh, is called a talisman, or in much talisman. more okay. informal, uh, informally, well, a talisman is supposed to protect you. Okay, uh, yes. a, a lucky charm. Okay, lucky it's, charm. It's, okay, it's supposed to give you luck and/or protect you, but lucky charm is very kind of informal. Some people, women, even have something called a charm bracelet, and it has like little, little charms on it that are supposed to symbolize things in her life or things that are lucky for her. Whatever, it's called a charm bracelet. Uh, Next yeah, okay, so the thing you're talking about with the writing, that would be some kind of a talisman. Um, let me let me talk to uh, Victor for a minute. Victor, uh, okay, Saiban, I was going to bring this up. Saiban brought it up for me. In Colombia, do they have the, the uh, concept of, is there any concept of the evil eye? Yes, it's very common, the evil eye. For it, yeah. uh, for example, when you have a little, a little children, child, little child, you can use some talisman in his hand to protect to the evil eight. Also, people in, in the in in the bed of the of the children of the children sometimes use uh, some uh, small figures of the. Really, I don't know what you say the, of uh, Jesus Christ, uh -huh. Jesus or Jesus, to protect the children for the evil eye. And we have a lot of faith for the witches, so people protect the children for the witches. witches. Yes. Okay. Can can witches cast the evil eye like a curse? Yes. Yes. If people really, uh, we don't try to believe in, in witches, but we free are free from the fear for the witches because when you are children or would you listen histories about story sorry about the the witches about the power right. of the witches about the power of the devil it's very common what like the, the, like yeah, uh, the power of the of the of the bad okay well, where do you hear these stories from other kids or from your parents before you go to bed or no, it's, 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 it's very common when you are chill. You, ca you, you listen to these stories by, for your mother or for your father or for your friends. Okay, when you are Yes, okay. yes from, sorry. You, okay. When you uh, talk with your, with your friends when you are a child, sometimes you speak about the, the stories about the, the, 
the gods, about the monster. And, yeah. and in Colombia, we have a lot of, of rural zones. And in, in the rural zones, there is, for every rural zone, and a special monster, for example, we have the Llorona, we have the Moan, and <laughs> but these kind of spirits are good spirits because only uh, try to do things to the people that are drink drinking for the drunks or for people oh. that are bad. Oh. Yes. Isn't that convenient? The strange mythical beasts only mess with people who are drunk. <gasps> I swear I saw one. Yes, every yeah, okay. people that are drunk, wow. the Girona, for example, or the Sombreronas, you can see a woman, hmm. a woman with a beat hat. <laughs> okay. The, the idiot when you are drunk. Well, that's very convenient. <laughs> okay, okay, Victor. Correct your, I would like to correct your pronunciation just a little bit. One child, it's a long I, chai, chai, child. Shy, child. shy. When you're a child, you. right. And then plural is children, so the long I, child, becomes ill, chill, children. So it changes that I sound. Okay, and uh, another co-location, you protect somebody from or something protects you from. Not Thank protect you. to, but protect you from. You're welcome. Okay, that's interesting. Well, that's very convenient that uh, the mythical creatures come out when you're drunk. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, that's pretty yes, good. Yes, and also the first time you are drink, when you start to drink, the first um, the first piece of the of the liquor are for the soul of the purgatory. Oh, so people like uh, they pour a little out on the ground. Yes, before, it's for the right, soul I've of seen, the purgatory. Okay, I've seen that custom before. Yes, they do that here in the Philippines as well. I think that was a Spanish thing. I'm not sure. Uh, I wish I had some Spanish people in class today. Hey, somebody who's from Spain, come in the class. But uh, they do that also here in the Philippines. When they when they open up a bottle to sit around and start a party or start drinking, they always splash them on the ground. All right, speaking of superstitions, there we go. There's one right there. Um, okay, well, we'll just, each one of you will give the next person an idea, I guess. Heidi, do Japanese people ever have any superstitions about throwing alcohol on the ground or salt on the ground? Or uh, anything? Uh, do you ever throw anything on the ground? I to... had, um, you can see in uh, sumo wrestling. Um, before fighting, sumo wrestler spread salt on the ground. I have seen that. You're right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Purify well, the ground. To purify the ground. Okay. Yeah. And even uh, some, uh, like Japanese or pub, they put salt, like a small mountain, in the corner of the, the entrance. Really? To avoid bad, bad things in the, uh, the, in the, the, the shop, uh, shop, restaurant, a pub. Uh -huh. Okay, well that's a good one. There's many superstitions that have to do with salt. Uh, English-speaking countries, if you spill the salt on the table, it's very common, of course, you may know, to have salt and pepper on the table, and inevitably the salt's going to get and spilled. And sometimes we need to participate in the funeral. Then uh -huh. after that, we need to uh, go back to our each, uh, house. Before entering the house, they need to put salt in uh, their body. Really? Okay. Yes. So, so salt is a purifier. Yes, yes. Basically. If uh, I participate in some funeral, the um, funeral owner uh, will give you a small amount of salt, the package of salt. Okay. You know, it's not really surprising that salt is so important and 
in many cultures and has so many superstitions attached to it. Because that, that person uh, will follow you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, okay. Anyway, I was just going to say it's not really surprising. Without salt, you know, human civilization never would have happened because people couldn't have preserved food. We didn't always have food preservatives, you know. I people. talked about that, about the Taj Kassam funeral with the Filipinos. Filipinos yeah. agreed with that. What's that? About uh, salt? Yes, they do the same thing after funeral. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I think I've heard that before, but I, I didn't. I haven't seen it, but I, I think I heard that before as well. Okay. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of superstitions involving salt. I was going to say Westerners, when they spill salt on the table, they'll pick up a little bit of the salt, a pinch. What you can put in your finger is called a pinch. And by the way, if you're cooking, you put a pinch of salt in the soup, a pinch of pepper. That's mm -hmm. what a pinch is. Anyway, they'll pick up a pinch of salt and throw it over their left shoulder. I've actually experienced that in a restaurant before. I was sitting behind somebody and suddenly they threw salt on me. I'm like, what the? What are you doing? I'm oh, sorry, I spilled the salt. Oh, okay, that's nice. I have salt in my hair now. I'm on a date and I have salt in my hair. Great. Thank you. Anyway, uh, people do do that. Uh, Sasha, are there any superstitions in any way related to salt in, in Russia? Can you think of any? The same if you, uh, yeah. especially before your maybe trip or long the long drive, you just spill the salt, you should uh, throw it uh, over your left um, um, uh, I forgot the left uh, um, yes, shoulder? yes, yes, yes Shoulder. Shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sometimes I forget to uh, forget yeah. uh, simply words. Yes, over your, because it's like uh, uh, you have a bad, <laughs> bad, bad guy on your left shoulder. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you throw it over your uh, shoulder, and uh, it's okay. <laughs> you you are safe now. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's it's it's interesting. There are certain commonalities with, uh, with both with myths, so bigger things, but also s simple superstitions. Um, okay, do you, uh, Sasha, do you have any superstitions related to money? Things you should or shouldn't do with money. Uh, yes, uh, sometimes, um, for instance, if if you. I guess it's common, uh, not only in Russia. When you win, for instance, money uh, in uh, maybe in a casino or something like that, a lottery, you should uh, uh, take this uh, banknote, just just money, uh, for instance, one hundred dollars, and uh, uh, like rub it through uh, fa uh, through face of your friends, for instance. And, uh, <laughs> But I don't quite remember what words. And uh, uh, if you okay. if you return if you return uh, if you borrow money borrowed money from your friends and then you return it, you uh, like you shouldn't uh, uh, hand it hand him over uh, hand to hand. You should uh, put the put uh, uh, the money on the table, and uh, only then. Uh, your friend can take it. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Now, some of these things, I, I don't know, is it, why? I mean, why Why is that? Is it because it uh, causes first, bad luck, or is it? First, uh, first I said about uh, rubbing uh, to face, it's like to. Yeah, that's obviously luck. For a lot. To, yeah, obviously. To right. huge and, uh, more. And the uh, second one, not to touch, not to take from hand. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a sort of like a bad luck, something with uh, maybe with okay. uh, with fight between friends, something like that. I'm not. Oh, sure. okay, all right. Because uh, there's a fine line sometimes. What um, what may be a superstition? If it's obviously for the purpose of getting luck, that's luck is you know superstitious. There's no science behind 
luck and no luck. But sometimes there are other things like um, Heidi in another class, was it yesterday or today? I don't remember. You were talking about if you're in Japan, when you give money to another person, you must always put it in an envelope or something uh, and hand it to them with both hands. Now, that's not superstition. That's something else. That's called social convention. All right? It's considered disrespectful. Nobody's thinking it causes luck or anything like that. It's a, it's a cultural social convention. It's something that everybody does as a sign of respect. But it's not about luck or the evil eye or something. So there, there's a kind of a fine line there between the two. Kind of an unspoken rule. Yeah, thank you, Sasha. That's another way, maybe a better way to put it. Uh, unspoken social okay. things. For example, if you were given some money, and the, just money or in, inside of envelope, which prefer? <laughs> which do prefer? Just give me money. I don't care how you give it to me. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, if the, they put the money in the envelope, it means they already um, prepared for you. Ah, right. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, whatever. I'm an American. I'm greedy. You give me the money anyway. I don't care. Throw it in a ball and throw it in, the, in a mud puddle. I don't care. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying. It's a sign of respect. Right. So that's that's what I'm saying. It is not a superstition. This is more of a social, what's called a social convention or a cultural convention. Um, right. Uh, so that's a little different. So I just, so people don't get confused. Saban. Uh, Okay, how about in your country? Do you have any uh, superstitions that have to do with money? Uh, no, teacher. I no? don't okay. think so. Uh, no, I mean, I don't remember any of this, but uh, uh, there's uh, some superstition about the marriage. If, uh, you know, it's like traditional uh, when uh, the... the uh, not uh, grown, not grown. Uh, what? Uh, uh, not grown. What? Bride, bride. When the bride, uh, she she just uh, don't face to the. I mean, when it is that like when it's wedding, uh, at the end of the wedding, uh, the bride will just uh, uh, face off. Uh, uh, I mean, will ask uh, many girls. To come uh, to 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 get close to get together and close to her uh, uh, the like um, uh, stage like I mean like stage get to close to the stage and uh, mm -hmm. usually we put a groom and a bride on the stage I mean uh, something that is uh, different from other I mean we we hold uh, the party in in the like. In the hall, a, a big or a big, a big hall, and mm -hmm. we do this. It's, it's usual. It's traditional. And at the end of the, by the end of the wedding, uh, the the bride will ask uh, non-marriage girls to come uh, get close to the uh, uh, the the stage, and she will face off, turn her face away from them, and she will just throw uh, uh, the flower. Uh, bucket the flower bucket to them and whoever I mean whoever pick up this bucket will uh, get married uh, will get married uh, after this I mean she will, yes. be, she, she will we, be lucky we have exactly the same tradition in Western culture did you realize that <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. You didn't know I that? that in a, no. <laughs> no, in, in Ohio, in the United States, they do the same thing, exactly as you described. Oh, 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 okay. I didn't know that, teacher. You know that? Okay. <laughs> no. Okay, but let me, let me correct your English a little bit. Okay, the, the bride faces away, okay, faces, okay, faces yes. away or from from the unmarried women, 
or you could say the bride turns around. Uh, okay. Yeah, either either way, she she turns around okay. and then throws the bouquet. Boo, like boo. Bouquet. Uh, okay. Bouquet. 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 Yes. Right. You got to be careful there, Saban, my friend, because a bucket, like a, a bucket is something you put water in, like a pail. Oh, okay. a, a bucket. Yes. So okay. it would not be good if she threw a bucket of flowers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ah. Congratulations. You'll be married. <laughs> hey, take okay. me to the hospital. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Better be up with bouquet of flowers. Yeah, that's very interesting that you have the same tradition. I did not know that. I'm glad you shared that with us yeah, because <laughs> European and American cultures, same exact thing happens exactly the same way. Interesting. Uh, okay, weddings. Now, all right, Savannah's brought up weddings. Weddings, even Western weddings, are loaded absolutely loaded with superstitions because you have the bond of man and women, the whole, all the superstitions about um, things that are supposed to help uh, make the couple productive, have babies for many, many years. Humankind tried to make as many babies as possible because we were being killed by lions and tigers and bears and storms and everything and wars and everything else and disease most of all. So people tried to have as huge a family as possible. So th there was a lot of superstitions about getting married and um, having the marriage be fruitful. Lots of children. L even at Western, modern Western weddings today, you could probably find at least a dozen uh, superstitions in a modern wedding in the United States today. Um, so let me go to Victor. Victor, let's talk weddings. What okay. uh, Colombian weddings? Is there any special kind of? Yes, superstition? it's a very special and, and very expensive uh, occasion yeah. because very it's expensive. a lot of yeah, it's very expensive. There is a lot of tradition mm -hmm. related to the weddings, but mm -hmm. uh, related to the superstition, there is a very common that is when the when the after the the, the married people when them sorry with the wife and the husband are are working people throw then uh, rice because people think it's a good loot. Also, if in the during during the the ceremony uh, rice people say that the that the wife is not virgin, so it's a good it's a bad about the, the wife. Oh, 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 she's not a, yeah, did I hear you right? Not she's a not a virgin? All right. Well, that's why yeah. brides wear white. It's supposed to symbolize purity and virginity, supposedly. Yes. Also, uh -huh. the, the woman all, always uh, wear with a white dress, but it's a very common tradition. Right. People also try to do the best, and there is a lot of food, there is a lot of, of, of dreams, decor. It's a very, very <laughs> nice tradition. Right. Okay. Uh, Victor, uh, it's, it's a good luck. Uh, no, you can't say it's a good luck, because luck is uncountable as it should be, if you think about it. Uh, you can't have, I had three lucks today. You can, you can say I had three pieces of good luck. You can be on a lucky streak. I'm on a streak of luck. Okay, okay. a lot of good luck in a row. You can have a piece of luck, but you can't have a luck. Thank can't you. Do it. Sure. Um, yeah, the rice, I, I, yeah, in American culture, they throw the rice too. Now they're starting to do other things, but that's traditional. And the rice is uh, supposed to symbolize fertility, as I was talking about, the whole fertility thing again. Uh, absolutely. Uh, now they don't do it. There's some weird thing. 
people are something like they they say the rice hurts the birds or I don't know <laughs> I don't know how is that possible how can rice hurt a bird I, I don't I don't know I'm not a bird scientist anyway okay uh, Heidi let's continue uh, are there any um, superstitious elements in a Japanese wedding. Mm -hmm. well, I'm kind of. Well, you know, there are some things that you don't even consider as being superstitious. Like in a Western wedding, mm -hmm. uh, the whole idea of exchanging rings is mm -hmm. basically a superstitious um, element. Um, about the, the marriage, marriage ceremony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not my place. Uh, my brother is living on the, um, the another place uh, called Nagoya. Nagoya has a lot of superstition. For example, um, the, um, uh, if you, uh, the taxi or uh, some car bring the bride uh, to the uh, to the place, they they can't back. They can go back, so even though uh, the street is very narrow, they need to uh, give some money to a another driver. Please ba go back. Uh, we are bringing on the, the blind, so uh, we can't go back. So they need to uh, prepare a lot of small envelope inside the uh, money. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Heidi, when we're talking about a car, we never say, oh, the car can't back. We can't back. We, we never say that in English. You, you always say back up, all right? Oh, we need to back up the car. The taxi can't back up. We always use a, a phrasal verb, back up. Back up. Yeah. Um, well, actually, when I think about it, not just the car, when I'm talking about me, myself, let me back up. Okay, let me. I can say, let me move back. Then I'm using back mm -hmm. as a preposition. But if I'm going to use back as a verb, we always back back up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, that's a pretty good one. That's a great one, actually. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Sasha, do you have any good wedding? Uh, Related superstitions? superstitions. <clears throat> yeah. um, I'm not sure, maybe like. Uh, ah, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, for instance, the groom uh, have to uh, uh, have to work have to work over the bridge, uh, in any bridge, with the uh, with with the. Uh, Wife on uh, hold, holding her wife on his, on his hands through the bridge, and usually uh, people uh, choose the longest bridge in town. If you if you can, <laughs> if, you, if you could, if you could uh, cr cross over the bridge, it, it means the, your relationship and the, your uh, uh, <laughs> life will will, uh, uh, will uh, last forever. But uh, if you can't, you maybe. Can uh, don't have enough strange to uh, uh, to hold her, and uh, in the middle of the bridge you just uh, put her on the ground. It's a bad sign. Okay. It's considered as a bad sign. Well, you would be very bad for uh, Russians to get married in New Orleans. There's a uh, on the back side of New Orleans. <laughs> there's, a, there's the Lake Pontchartrain Bridge. It is 24 miles long. <laughs> so that's you're getting close. Uh, okay. I wouldn't one choose miles, to Yeah, one mile is 1.6. So in kilometers, that's you know uh, 24, 36, like 37, 38 kilometers. <laughs> Yes, good luck. Uh, yeah. yeah, good luck crossing that one. 
with your bride. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. All right. In, in Western culture, it's traditional when you uh, walk across the threshold. Do you know what a threshold is, Sasha? No, no, no. Uh, do I know how to spell it is the second question. Um, no. Uh, oh, there's one H. Okay, threshold. Across, right. uh, as well, holding on, on, her, on his hand. Yeah, you must carry your new bride uh, over over the threshold. The threshold is like uh, where your door is to your house. There's usually like a small bump, like a board, like a special board under the door, um, and that's called the threshold. Um, physically, okay, that's an actual physical, you can touch it, the bottom of the door. So you carry your bride over the threshold into your house. Kind of similar. Uh, okay, but also a threshold is like, uh, well, all right, gasoline will burn at 45 centigrade, so the threshold is 45 centigrade. That's another use of the word threshold. Uh, okay, a point where something changes is a threshold, or an, a reaction happens. Is a, is, that's a, a threshold. So you can say, for example, I, I have a, uh, a high threshold for pain. It means I can take a lot of pain before I'm going to complain or scream or cry. Mm -hmm. Or oppositely, I have a low threshold for pain. You know, <laughs> you know like that. Okay. Men, uh, men usually have lower than women. Men usually have uh, higher. Oh, or lower. Or, no, lower. Um, so men, uh, w w women uh, mostly can cope Take with pain more uh, than men. That was uh, okay. men. So, well, that's what you said. You said men have a lower threshold, and that's what you said. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. M women have to go through childbirth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the. And I remembered uh, another one. Uh, we uh, led uh, first to. Uh, to in the ha new house of newlyweds, the cat let cat go first, and only then people. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. That's an interesting one. It's oh, a, that's a cool for one. For luck, right. like for. For luck. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, that's a good one. All right, let's talk animals. Why not? We started with a black cat. Let's take it all the way around. Saiban, are there any superstitions that involve animals in well, your culture? Uh, Cats or dogs or sheep uh, or cows or horses? Um, um, actually, uh, uh, not teach. I, I don't remember. I'm not old enough. I <laughs> mean, like, uh, maybe the. The previous generation, yeah, they have uh, some animal, but I think I think teacher people, I mean, uh, or in general, I mean, uh, consider uh, like uh, uh, I mean, donkey is not lucky. <laughs> I mean, donkey. <laughs> Donkey's not lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as well as uh, the dog <laughs> is not like he also, but the roast roaster roaster. If the roaster, um, there's a religion a religion belief in our belief. Uh, there's a religion. I mean, uh, uh, say uh, if the donkey is uh, not bar what we it makes sound. How we how we can say it in English, <laughs> teacher? <laughs> okay. When, <laughs> yes, a donkey, uh, a donkey brays, brays. That's that's how we write a donkey brays. Yeah. Okay, if the donkey, <laughs> <laughs> okay, if the donkey brays, uh, I mean, uh, it. If you hear a donkey brays, uh, it, it, it's not a good sign. It's. Uh, I mean, you have to be very careful. 
uh, if you if you I mean uh, listen I mean if you hear the roasted roasted uh, not the chicken the chickens uh, has been <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> do chickens marry in your culture okay rooster 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 okay, okay. rooster if you if you <laughs> hear roosters sound that's mean a good sign I mean really. Uh, Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's a really good sign. And That's another uh, superstition teacher, if you're uh, you, I I forget to tell you to tell you that uh, people still think if uh, your palm uh, I mean it's is being itchy the the right oh. one it's about money. If your if your uh, right hand palm if your right uh, palm uh, is being itchy yeah, so uh, you you are you you will gain money, uh, and if your uh, left hand left palm gain uh, being itchy, that means that you are gonna lose uh, lose uh, money. That okay. is about money, teacher. Yeah. All right. If it becomes okay, it starts to get. Become. So you can okay. say become. become. If it becomes itchy. You know what? We have the same one. Again, in Western oh, culture, oh. hand becomes palm becomes right hand becomes itchy palm. We also all see so Sasha itchy. is Sasha as well in Russia as well. Okay, there you go. It's amazing how widespread some of these some of these are really. Okay, if that's true about the roosters, then you know Philippines must be the luckiest country in the world because. Very strange thing about roosters here in the Philippines, where I now live. When I lived in America, roosters crow in the morning. When the sun comes up, roosters crow. But here, Philippines, roosters crow all day, all night long, <laughs> everywhere. And uh, keeping a rooster as a pet is a common hobby. So there are roosters in every neighborhood, everywhere you are. So you will hear commonly roosters all the time. Not many donkeys, though. Uh, okay. All right, Victor. Are, is there, are there any animal related? Yes. Uh, it's, it's, um, superstitions. Yes. In Colombia, when uh, when uh, a dove or uh, another kind of lead or bird defect defecates, I mean, I don't know if it's the correct. <laughs> okay, that's very good. And you. It's a sign of good loot, so you will more will form find sorry will find some money, or you will or you will do the the chance, as I said as at the okay. beginning of the class. Wait, I missed it. If what defecates on you? A uh, dove or a, a bird. Dove. A dove. The bird. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Really? Oh yes, my and people is happy. People is happy when it, when this kind of, of thing happens. <laughs> they are. Oh yay! A bird pooped yes. on me. I will receive some oh, money, or yeah. I will All find right. some money. Uh, yes, it's uh, a common superstition, and people is happy with with it. There you go. Another that's common good... superstition related to the to the animal is you never. Kill uh, uh, moths. Uh, sorry. Ah, yes, moths. Yes, moths. Yeah, I know that one. Right. Right, it's I know a that one. Moth, a moth. Sorry, a moth. Yes, yes. Because it will give you some bad luck. Look, sorry. So, but look, so you never kill a moth. Right, this one I know. Um, some beliefs, and even like I think Native American Indians believe that the moth was the, like like dead spirits, like ghosts, people, spirits that hadn't flown away to heaven or flown away wherever they're going to fly yet. Really, I don't know the, the origin of this superstition, but it's very common. For example, in my family, do my father never kill a, a moth. Yeah. He thinks he's a bad thing. Right. I, they, they have the same one in Venezuela. I was in Venezuela. That's where I learned that one. 
Uh, yeah. They have some big moths there, too. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. I have a friend who's terrified of moths. It's the funniest thing you've ever seen. He's uh, one of those guys that has, like, tattoos everywhere, wears a leather jacket. He has a tough voice like this. He sounds like, uh, I still have to slow. Uh, all right. Bald head, everything. Mr. Tough Guy. But if he sees a moth, he'll scream, and he sounds like a five-year-old girl. It's the funniest <laughs> thing you've ever seen. You wet your pants laughing. He, I swear, I wet my pants when watching him with a moth. It's the funniest thing in the, on earth. Okay, well that was a very uh, that was a very amusing conversation. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions, your many contributions. It was very illuminating. I learned a lot. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Very See, you. Okay, bye. See you soon. See you later.